So those of you who haven't, uh, weren't able to join the meeting, hello, my name's Jem Bendel and uh, there's 23 of us on this call, uh, PDA facilitators meeting, which we also uh, announced in the Holistic Approaches and Guidance Group um, in order to make those connections um, because uh, this is about how do we hold space and provide support for people at this uh, particularly um, stressful time. Um, with the pandemic now leading to isolation, uh, countries effectively shutting down, concerns about future income, uh, con in my case, concerns about visas and where I should go and that kind of thing. Um, so uh, what I want to do is just um, say something about what I've shared with all of you and um, if you uh, don't know what I'm talking about, the, the document that summarizes the new initiative, which is about basically widening our uh, support for deep listening online, uh, there is a website now. It's called deeprelating.space. So if you go to, if someone could type that in, please, uh, deeprelating.space. So anyone who's listening to this later as well, just go there and you'll see the summary document of the initiative, which I'm intending to. Uh, publish and also blog about uh, later today. Uh, my aim for the call is to tell you as facilitators who we've been working with um, about the idea, where it's coming from, explore, well, get your feedback, but explore how as a group we could support it, but also then um, hear about your own initiatives that you may have been taking outside of the, the DA, explicitly the, the DA forum and, and theme, uh, and share that with each other, but also then see what new ideas there might be and how people might help each other. So if you look in the agenda, there's, um, uh, we, we've got another 40 odd minutes on this section. So very quickly then, if you go to, go to that link uh, that I mentioned, you'll see a summary there. Um, it's, uh, I've been talking to quite a few people who um, I know outside of my deep adaptation work. Um, my parents, my brother, uh, work colleagues, and it's been, and, and friends here. And uh, they are all um, beginning to um, feel many of the emotions that I felt in at various times before 2018. Um, uh, in, and then since when I when I when I published that paper, and I realised that we have experience, expertise, personnel um, who who can really help people, um, like not try and suppress those feelings, but to connect with them, share them, uh, even find connection and community in the fact that those feelings are in in all of us uh, to some degree. Um, so I then also realized that um, I myself and quite a lot of people I've worked with have been a bit reticent to explicitly engage, respond with, respond to coronavirus and the pandemic because we were thinking, well, this could be something that will cause a wobble for some months. Um, but uh, the deep adaptation framework is more about anticipating and preparing for a whole scale breakdown and collapse of society induced by climate change, whether direct or indirect. And so how do we relate to this existing issue was, was, was initially was a bit difficult for me and other people who work on deep adaptation. Um, but then it became really obvious that, um, that uh, this is, an experience of societal breakdown, obviously right now, for uh, hundreds of millions of people around the world. Uh, and, it's and some people are also then thinking about this, this isn't something we bounce back to, to business as usual. Uh, this is um, something that's, that's either going to continue to degrade society uh, in some ways, or at least industrial consumer society, or it will create a drag on that way of life and that economic and uh, social or form of organization, which will make the uh, climate-induced collapse uh, more likely and harder 
unless we use this crisis to build resilience uh, to uh, you know all the four R's, the things, those conversations that we need to have to see how we can adjust. So, um, so because of that, I thought, yeah, um, what do we do as a as a network, uh, as a community? And I came up with this this idea and talked it through with the core team. And it it's I think one of the reasons why, as a core team, we haven't really jumped into this as well is that we're feeling quite overstretched. And we've been involved in basically organization and movement building in terms of strategy dialogues, setting that up, uh, establishing and launching a holding group and bringing them on board, uh, and talking to a lot of different fundraisers and having to get to know them and, and, and so on. And so there's, and myself, I've been busy on a book. Um, so yeah, there's, I think that's also why we've been holding back a bit. And then that is a real insight into how we need to design for emergence that no one's depending on anyone. There's no, there's no point anywhere where we're thinking, oh, so-and-so's doing that, or I'm meant to be doing that, oh, I must get around to that. And we need to design for emergence. And that was the original philosophy for the forum. And I'm realizing that already that philosophy can sort of uh, reduce somewhat. So. That was the, also the idea behind the concept of widening, widening deep listening, that we actually invite anyone in our networks or even anyone we talk to, to give it a go, to give it a go in holding space for people to show up and share their emotions and that we can offer support in terms of, you know, look at this document, uh, post what you're doing to this network, invite someone who knows how to hold space in person or online to then join in with you and hold your back or to give you feedback afterwards. And if you're feeling that, oh, I, I, I don't know how to deal with the fact that some people may be presenting with extremely distressed emotions and that you're worried for them and their mental health and how to hold that, then reach out to say you would like a therapist to join your call as well. And you know there are various things that we could do, but that, that sort of attention to being really professional, ethical, rigorous, thorough is good but not if it becomes a barrier to just getting on and doing something so that that's where the uh, idea came from uh, and i had a really super chat with um amy uh, a few days ago and amy this is your fault um this was this was came at there's a key time that chat and i realized yeah sod it let's just sort of unleash things so that's the idea right where have i got to i present the widening deep listening so at the moment, I'm thinking of an out. I've written a blog, which I'll publish after this. It's called A Pandemic of Love, Deeper, Deeply Adapting to Corona. Uh, and it's, it's about, um, so then I just present this widening deep, deep listening initiative and just throw it out there. And I have no idea whether it will just be an invitation or it will actually become an initiative. Um, and I've come up with some ideas about how we as a group can help people who step up. And it would be lovely, really lovely, if the first people just stepping up tomorrow to hold space, say, on a 40-minute free Zoom, um, are people who've never done it before and have never seen themselves as facilitators before. And it would be lovely if they posted that in the PDA group and one of you said, yep, that time zone fits, yep, I've got a slot, I'll hold your back and I'll give you some feedback afterwards. So that would be amazing if that happened. So I've talked now for five minutes. Um, please put your hand up if, oh, hold on. No, let me do some jazz hands or not sure. Let, I just want a general check in. Who likes, if you like the idea um, a bit, do one jazz hand. If you like the idea a lot, do two jazz hands. And if you're mm, a bit doubtful about where this is the way to go, then just give me a, 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 a doubtful sign just so I get a sense of things. Everyone go on gallery views so we see how things are. <clears throat> 